Welcome everyone, lovely to have you here. My name is Steve, I'm going to be hosting today's service with Rebecca. And if this is your first time at Christ City Church, we are delighted you've come. I hope you have a great service and enjoy it and participate. I say this every year, but at the carol, the family carol service, everyone needs to channel their inner child, okay? So I expect lots of channeling of that inner child. Some of you, that becomes very easy. Uh, but uh, we want adults to participate and shout out and join in. If anything goes slightly wrong, if the kid says the wrong line, if me and Rebecca say the wrong line, you just laugh and smile, okay? That's how we work. So uh, please just enjoy the spirit of, spirit of it. We're quite relaxed. And if there are a few little glitches or things that go a bit awry, we'll just enjoy them too. So uh, you're really, really welcome. Uh, just a few bits of housekeeping. If you are uh, new to Christ City Church, the ladies' toilets is down the back. So you can head down the back at any point and just down the stairs you'll see them. And the gents are just up here and to the left and you'll see them there. So if you need the refreshments, uh, refresh yourself at any point, do head there. Uh, afterwards, there will be refreshments out here. So we'll all file out here. And I believe there's mulled apple. So enjoy the mulled apple after the service and there'll be some other snacks and goodies. So uh, do, uh, do stay around for some refreshments afterwards. And you should have uh, a chocolate bar or a sweet on your seat. That is to help channel your inner kid and get a few E numbers into you. So by all means, you can get stuck into that at some point during the service. If you have children, obviously this is a family service. We expect it to be loud and fun. And if kids make a noise, then they're just worshiping the Lord in our opinion. But if you would like to take a child out who's a bit younger, there is a self-service crash uh, down the stairs. But otherwise, hopefully all the kids can can stay in for the service. So yeah, really welcome. And uh, if children want to come forward at any point and participate, they can then just try and filter into these front rows. It's fine if they want to stay up the front near, near the front or if, if you want to do that as parents too. Um, okay, oh, welcome online. I see a good number of online people. I put on my tux for you. Uh, so I hope you're enjoying that. Oh, we have Edwin and Marlene. Lovely to have you back online. Welcome. So uh, I hope you can enjoy the service online. Oh, look, I pre-typed a message. Enter to. There we go. Um, good. Rebecca, we always start our Christmas carols with a Christmas jumper competition. So if you're wearing a Christmas jumper, could you stand uh, of any quality? Don't disqualify yourself early. Ooh, okay, good. Okay. Some interesting jump. What are you saying, Rebecca? What are you seeing? Yeah, okay. I've got some nice, some bells, a lot of glitter, which I like to see. Oh, we've got some great glasses at the back there. From oh, Andrew. cheers, Andrew, cheers for the glasses. Oh, we've got Vanessa pointing out matching reindeer jumpers oh. with Theo. Isn't that cute? So, uh, round of applause for everyone. Woo! Now, Rebecca is going to pick the two that she thought were the most dashing, and we're going to have you come forward and have a clap off, okay? So, Rebecca, who are the two most dashing Christmas jumpers? I must say, one of my favorite Christmas jumpers has to be Josiah. Oh! Look at him! Look at Come that Come to the bow front, tie. Josiah, Come Jez. Come to the front. Come to the Jez front. Jez and Josiah. Now, I the pity the person. Gym. I pity the person that's going to compete against Josiah. <laughs> but and have a good time. <laughs> the other jumper, and I, I, people may say I'm biased, but I would like to put out that I'm not being biased. I'd have to say it's my best friend, Kitty Young's jumper. Oh, come it's on. got the lights. Rigged, She's got the rigged, <laughs> rigged. No, 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 okay. no, no, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't allow her to win anything. So we have Katie that. Young here, and we have Josiah here. Now it's going to be a cla uh, It's going to be. A Everyone can sit down. I'm afraid those of you that wore Christmas jumpers, you're loved, but you're not top two. Okay. So. Uh, so the way this works is you have a clap off. So we'll start. If you think Katie Young should win the Christmas Jumper Competition 2021 for Christ City Church Carol Service, clap your hands now. <laughs> now, if you think Josiah Wilhurst, with the bow tie, with his father and the coolest Christmas jumper in town, should win the 2021 <laughs> Christmas Carol's Christ City Church got the wrong order wrong. Clap <laughs> well, there we go, Josiah. You won. Any, wow. any, any comments? Any comments? Can you say thank you? Thank you. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hello, go. and thank Big you very of much. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay, we're now going to to worship. What is it? My boat? Oh, you see, I don't wear bow ties normally. Okay, there we go. Thanks. Okay, Annabelle, you're going to lead us in our call to worship. Is this all right? Hello? Okay. 
Before I do this, excuse the long dress. This is part of my costume. <laughs> okay, so. There are many things in the world that can make us feel alone, insecure, and isolated. Right now, many com people can feel unsafe and isolated because of COVID-19. A couple of my favorite Bible verses that tells me I'm never alone and always safe is Romans 8, 37 to 39. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither present nor future, nor any powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christmas reminds us about God's love for each of us and how we are never alone. God could have sent another message or a prophet, but he, yet he gave himself not to live as a king, but to be born in a stable and to suffer all his life for us. That, that is how much he loved us and wanted to be near us to comfort us. What I have learned over 10 years that, is that God is forgiving, but not naive or foolish. He is so loving that he gave everything for something that tortured him, rejected him, and turned away from him. It inspires me to think about Jesus' sacrifice to me to make, to make eternally secure and loved. So as we come today to sing and worship Jesus, let me share my experience in worship, about worship, sorry. For a short while I roped into, into it like I had to go. But when I joined in, I sensed beauty in everything about him and found that was worth worshiping. So let's come today with glad hearts as we remember who we are worshiping, the king born to, to, in a stable to be near us, Emmanuel. Let's stand to sing. Thank you. Amen. Um, so uh, we're doing a new song. We did it for the first time last week. And so a number of you may not have heard it, so I'm just going to play the verses and the chorus to you just to familiarize yourselves and uh, just so anyway so you know how it goes so it goes it was a silent night if we could have the words up as well that'd be great a holy night when all the world was sleeping in a little town on lowly ground no one knew what was coming in a manger we would find a humble king all creation held its breath when suddenly your light came breaking through the darkness waking every heart with heaven seen joy unto the world a long-awaited savior you will reign forever we are seen joy there you go. I heard you're already picking it up. Right, well, let's go. Let's go from the beginning. Oh, 
listening out there. My name is Rebecca Sharp and my uh, co-anchorman here, reporter, is Steve Vaughan. Um, and we are here to bring you the most unbelievable story tonight. We are coming to you live from the hill country of Judah with one of the most unbelievable stories I've ever heard. Could you introduce yourselves for those listening at home? Awesome, Mike. Well, my name's Elizabeth. You can call me Lizzie. And this is my husband, Zachariah. Thank you. Hi, Zachariah. <laughs> okay, what is, what's going on here? Oh, yeah. He can't speak. Short story. Long story. But all our lives is long for kids. But I'm old, and I didn't think I could have children. But God has answered my prayers, and I will hopefully be having a baby very soon. This is working. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we can hear you here. Um, you're saying you're going to have a baby soon? Oh, yeah. It really reminds me of our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, who had a baby when they were almost 100 years old. But thankfully, I'm not 100 years old. Thankfully. <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> and their family became God's people. And what if this birth can mean something special is happening? Well, that sounds awesome. I mean, that does sound like something pretty special is happening. And unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. I have reports coming in from some, that something incredible is happening over in Bethlehem. Our reporter, Steve, is with some eyewitnesses who are going to tell us a little bit more. Over to you, Steve. Rebecca, uh, wait, wait, it's really windy in Bethlehem. Uh, let's see what we got here. We're coming to live, live, not to live. We're coming live from the streets of Bethlehem. It's the census time of year, and the place is packed to the rafters. Everyone has turned up. I'm going to try and grab a quick interview with some eyewitnesses who reportedly have seen something amazing. Well, hello. Who are you, and what is your name? Well, I'm Shauna the Shepherd, of course. I mean, I can't seem to find my sheep, but they're here somewhere. Don't worry about the shape. Tell all the viewers at home what you've seen in the last 24 hours in Bethlehem. 
I mean, last time was totally awesome. It was the most glorious night. I mean, my mates were looking after our sheep. I'm sure you are aware that Brexit <laughs> has hit a shepherd's heart. We were working very late. Anyway, all of a sudden, an, an angel appeared before us. We were freaked out. The sky was so bright, and all the angels told us. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today is the town of David, that's Bethlehem for all of you who aren't good at geography. <laughs> A savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. He is this is a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly, loads of other angels joined in, and they must all be mates, and started to praise God and kept repeating this line. Glory to God in the highest heavens and on earth, Peace to those on whom his favor rests. Incredible. I am lost for words. Well done, all of you. Well, it's all going on here. A crazy angel light, lighting and singing show. Scared shepherds. An apparent savior of the world, baby born in a smelly animal feeding trough. We have never seen anything the like of it on RTU News. We're going to take a short interlude here, but who knows where the story is going to take us over the next couple of years. We'll have to wait to find out. What is next, Rebecca, on the schedule? Yes, well, the next thing you're going to do is I would love if you guys could join me as we sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs> Hark the herald angels sing
And if you'd all like to take a seat. And I'm just going to invite the Mullen family up with us now uh, to lead us in prayer. Thank you. So the Anderson family will be reading from Luke chapter 2 in a few minutes, but we were reflecting on this. Actually, Camila was thinking about this as we, uh, as we were preparing our, our prayer. And there's four distinct uh, thanksgivings that we can give in this, uh, in this passage of Scripture. So Angelina will begin. Okay. All right. Let's pray together. Yes, let's pray. Heavenly Father, first I want to just thank you for this time together as a Christian family, that we're here together to worship you, to praise you, to learn more about you. I thank you for this time of um, the Christmas season, um, that we have this time with friends, with family, we have this time, special time to reflect more on the ultimate gift that you gave us, uh, which of course is Jesus, your son. I thank you, God, that the king of the universe came to earth and revealed himself to everyone and that we don't need to be a VIP or have a big bank account or anything like that, but that God has made himself available to all. We thank you, God, that we don't have to be afraid, but that you had that God has made it possible for us to have joy and peace through Jesus. Thank you that God came to earth in the form of, of a man has met the, as, has Messiah and Lord so we can have relationship with God. We thank you, Lord, that from the lowliest manger to the highest heaven, your glory fills the earth. We're grateful to be together as a family, and we ask you to bless our time today in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome back, one and all. And we're just going to kick off with the infamous CCC icebreaker. So, today's question is, how many languages can you say Merry Christmas in? So, if we could get some people, do we have people who can say it any other language? Yes? Okay, Jacob over here, what have we got? Nalug Hanadich. It's Irish for Merry Christmas. Okay, Irish for Merry Christmas. Good to start off in Ireland with some Irish. Okay, yes. What have we got, girls? Feliz Natal. Feliz Natal. Yes. And Melakaliki Maka. Ooh, and what language is that? That is Hawaiian. Hawaiian, wow. Okay, we've got Annabelle here. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas! Come on, yeah, not, love it. Okay, what have you got? Gelukkig Yes. Wow. Okay. What Afrikaans. Afrikaans! Do you want to say it, of course? Gesiende kerstfeest. Love it. Great stuff. Any other, oh, okay, we've got one back here, yeah. Wow. Greek, wow, okay, we've got one more over here, oh, we've got loads of languages, back, yeah. get my 5k in today. This is Welsh, Nadolig Llawen. Mm. Oh, wow, oh, that looks. yes. In Hindi, we say Christmas ki shubh mm. Wow, that and oh, another one back here. Kratun for the Romanian. Romanian back here. Well yeah. Wow, I love your jumper. Did she put that on those on yourself? Oh, it's amazing. It's class. Wow. I love it. Happy we have a very linguistically 
Hey. Oh, we got more. more Confident church. <laughs> yes. Feliz Navidad. Yes. Feliz Navidad. Feliz. Wow. Well, there we go. Merry Christmas to you all. <laughs> well Steve done. Steve and I know none of our. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> Uh, I feel very well Merry christmas um, Good. Just a quick bit of church news, and then we're going to get into a game. Uh, so this, we have two more Christmas services or Christmas events if you want to participate over this Christmas season with us. Next Sunday is our banquet where we invite local neighbors and community members, particularly our homeless neighbors, to come for food and some music and a warm smile and a big... Uh, a big Christ City Church uh, hug of love, as it were. And there'll also be a chance for uh, anyone who comes to take away clothes and blankets and socks and hats and those kind of things. So please come along next week. The, service, uh, is, the banquet is an hour earlier, so we start at 3.30. And uh, there'll be food served in here. And then most of the banquet will be sort of outside chatting with the guests. And then people can come and go as they like. So it's next Sunday for, for an hour. We'd love the, the church to come along and play a part in welcoming and connecting with all the guests that we're going to have. And if you want to bring warm clothes or blankets or socks or hats and you have any of those spare, please bring them along. And then on the, um, on the 24th, we're going to have a Christmas Eve service, just a short 45-minute service online, just to prepare ourselves for Christmas Day. And so please join. There'll be a reflective time online at 7.30 in the evening on Christmas Eve. And as I said, that's next Sunday, free of charge, everyone welcome, and you can bring a dessert if you have one, and if you're able. Okay, it's time for a game, Bex, over to you. Yes, this is very exciting. We have the game, Are You Smarter Than the CCC Kids? And I mean, from that language round, I mean, I would be scared if I was challenging them, to be honest. So, I would like to ask the audience, do we have a challenger to go against the CCC Kids? No, you are the kid. You're a kid. You're, kid. you're gonna. You're. You're in. You're in. You're Any there. Any adults who want to take on the CCC kids? Was that Stephen Tuddy? I saw. Oh, oh great! Tuddy. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Okay, Stephen. I'll maybe get you to stand on this side. And our formidable kids there. We've got them all lined up here in the front row. So can I hear it from the kids? Yeah, love it. Woo -hoo. Why don't we have all the kids come and stand here so you can, uh, you can connect. Come on, turn in if you want. Get Everyone the brain so cells team. together. Do you see this guy, Stephen Tuddy? He looks like a Take giant. Take him down, okay? Yeah. Take him down. This is your mission. He's at college, but you know... You don't you let what, that fill you. Don't, don't let you, that yeah, fill you. You don't have to do much to be an island yeah. anymore yeah. in college, so it's fine. Okay, so are we all listening? The first question is... And I'll start, I'll, get, I'll start with Stephen, because I think he's going need, to he's gonna need all the questions he can get. Is, what is the name of the candle in Beauty and the Beast? You can talk, you can talk. Right okay. And I'm not going to give you, you know, you don't have 20 minutes to answer this. This is an online exam in college. This is fast-paced and furious, coming at you. Do you have an answer, Stephen? Uh, I do not have an answer. He doesn't have an answer. I'm going to send over to the kids. That is correct. Okay. One nil to the CCC kids. All right, Stephen. Okay. Now I'm coming over to the CCC kids team. What is Black Widow's real name? That is correct. Oh, okay. Yes. Just say yeah. that again. Brutal. We've got two and you've got zero. Oh, and we got a cheeky wink here. We got a cheeky wink as well. The sass is real. Okay, so the next question for Stephen is who is Mufasa's trusted advisor in The Lion King? Come on. Come on, Come Stephen. Come on, Steve-O. Don't let the side I'm down. I'm pretty sure we watched this together. I, I, we did watch it together, Rebecca, but I genuinely cannot remember. Oh, you got it. I hate to do it. This is absolute annihilation. Oh, I think I know what it is. Go on, go on. Zazu. Correct! Zazu! <laughs> they are on it today. Zazu. On fire, on fire. Okay, so the next question for the CCC kids, because they're not already wiping the road, is who is, what, what is the name of the fashion designer in The Incredibles. Edna. Do you have a surname? Edna Mullet. Yes, correct. <laughs> okay. So the kids are on four. Come on, Stephen. Stephen a bit of sympathy zero. with Stephen. Come on, crowd. Come on. Come on. 
Okay, okay, I've got one for you. I've got one for you soon. Okay. How many buttons does Olaf from Frozen have? Three. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. Four one, four one. Finally, for the kids. This is for the win. Okay. Because it's first to five. You guys are on four. Stephen's on one. This is for the win. Okay. Are you all listening? What is the name of the reindeer in Frozen? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> and they've only gone and done it, folks. The CCC kids have won. So, Stephen, I'm sorry, but you're not smarter. Big round of than applause for Stephen. You get a consolation chocolate. Take a chocolate, kids. Go on, take a chocolate. Very good. I the parents will be really thankful one. for all the chocolate take we're one. giving your kids today. <laughs> You got one? Kinders are so They're great. They're you got one? Well done. Well done, CCC kids. Well done, Stephen Tutty, for being a good sport. I also realize that uh, I, uh, I uh, have a Christmas jumper competition prize that I forgot to give out. So uh, I've just seen that there. Hey, Josiah, you won this. I forgot to give you that. Ooh. There we go. Treat yourself. Yeah. Just, Josiah's going to grow up thinking church is just where he gets gift after gift after gift, isn't it? Okay, uh, are we back to the newsroom? Yes, I believe we are. Hello and welcome back, folks, again. Uh, you may have not realized this, I know Steve and I look very young, but it's actually two years later at this stage. Uh, still don't have any gray hair. Uh, can't say the same for Steve, but he just doesn't have any hair. <laughs> Hi folks, so if you remember the incredible stories that we brought you a few years ago. Firstly, we had some old folkies, Zechariah and Elizabeth, who thought they were far too old to have a kid. And then they did, oh sorry, uh, well, Elizabeth, you're getting on now, okay? You have to accept it. You've had the baby. It's all going well. And then Zechariah lost his voice until they had a child named John. And then there were the frightened shepherds who claimed they'd seen angels and an apparent no. Messiah. I think you were very frightened. An apparent Messiah born in a manger. Well, tonight in a CCC news special, we catch up with the father in question, a man named Joseph, who is now back in the town of Nazareth. Nice to meet you, Joseph. Here he is. What do you recall from the dramatic events that happened leading up to Jesus' birth? Um, it was incredible. First with the whole fiasco with Mary getting pregnant through the Holy Spirit and then the angel appearing to me and saying, the angel said, can we remember what the angel said? Oh, we've got the angel back for the newsroom special. We only provide all the stops at CCC. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Joseph because... Jesus? He, Jesus, because... Because... He will save his people from their sins. Awesome. That is great. And Joseph, how, how do you feel? Um, um, at the same time, Mary's cousin Elizabeth was also pregnant. Uh, even though she was mega old. Me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it was then that I got an email saying that, I, that we had to check all the way down to Bethlehem for a census. And all the Ubers are booked. <laughs> Classic Uber. Not reliable. Sorry if you're an Uber driver right there. Mm. Um, wow, okay. And then, then what happened? <clears throat> uh, all that we could find was, uh, was a stinky manger. Mm-hmm. That was a bit of a, that must have been a hectic few months, huh? Yep. And so, are you now back in Nazareth? Yep. 
It's been nice being back in Nazareth and having a nice bit of peace and quiet. Oh. Well, uh, hello. Who are you? We're the wise men from the east. Duh, Duh. check out the beards. Look how much pondering we've been doing. I can see the pondering and I see the beard. Um, okay, so what brings some pondering bearded wise men to Nazareth today? Well, you see, we work part-time for NASA and we saw the super bright star up in the sky. So we decided to follow it because we thought it would bring us to the king of the Jews, the, ones, the one that the prophets have been harping on about for years. Hmm, that's all very intriguing. Okay, so do I see some, uh, some presents there? Yes, but they're not for you. We have come all this way to see this king to give him some really cool gold frankincense and myrrh. Wow, these wise men seem pretty overjoyed. Rebecca, what do you make of all this? Oh, what a glorious night it has been, Steve. I think I need to find out a little bit more about this baby Jesus. I have a feeling he could change the whole world. Mm. Well, with that note, on the theme of a glorious night, we're going to stand to sing, Oh, Holy Night. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining, it is the night. Of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the
divine, O night, when Christ was born, O night, divine, O night, O night divine. everyone would like to take a seat again. We're now going to have our reading from Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 15. So there should, uh, if you guys have your Bibles with you or if you got the sheet, please feel free to follow along. And we've got some of our lovely treehouse kids uh, telling this story for us. There were some shepherds in the fields looking after their sheep. An angel from God came to them, and they were terrified. Look scared. The angel said, don't be scared. I've got really exciting news for everyone. A baby has been born who will save the world. He is Jesus, God's son. Go and find him in a stable, he's sleeping in a manger. Suddenly, there were loads of angels, all singing and praising God, saying glory to God and peace to all people. The shepherd said, let's go to Bethlehem. That's Susie Bissy and Susie. Thank you to our great readers and to our great actors and actresses. Can we give them a round of applause as well for the amazing activity? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Andrew. I've been going to church here for about four years and it's great to be here and to see so many new faces today. So you're very welcome. For the next 10 minutes or so, we're gonna be focusing on yeah, the verses um, on the piece of paper on your chair, but especially on verse 14, which reads, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. So it's a bit of a, a strange verse, a funny verse, maybe language we don't use every day in 2021. So we're gonna break it down into two sections. We're gonna look at peace and we're gonna look at glory. So let's start with peace. I hope most of us are familiar enough with peace. Um, if you're a parent here, you might need to think back a few years before you had kids. You might have a, ray, a vague recollection of what peace looked like, but we think of peace in, in lots of different ways. We maybe think of the south of France, white sandy beach, uh, lounging um, beside the pool, something like that, or maybe we think a bit more like you know, a period in history where there was no wars or conflicts between people groups, and between nations. I think what Luke here and his account of Jesus' life, what the piece he's referring to goes back to the very beginning of the Bible, way back to Genesis. You remember the story, God creates the world and everything in it, and it was all good. And then he creates man, Adam and Eve, and it wasn't just good, it was, and it's, it's not hard to think why it was so good, wasn't it? Beautiful gardens, plentiful food, the Garden of Eden, how amazing it would be. But more importantly, there was perfect peace between God and man. But unfortunately, it doesn't take very long. Two pages into the Bible, in Genesis chapter 3, we have the fall. This is where Adam and Eve say to God, we don't want you to be our God. We reject you. We want to be in charge of ourselves. We want to make the rules. We want to be our own gods. And this is where this thing called sin enters the world. This is, sin is just us rejecting God. And, and the problem with sin is that it means we cannot be in peace with God. We cannot have that relationship with him. He is all good 
all loving, all powerful, as Annabelle read earlier. And you can't deal with sin. And that leads to Adam and Eve being yeah, banished from the Garden of Eden, banished from God's presence. So that's the sin Luke is referring to here, a spiritual, a spiritual peace. So let's, let's, we have that piece, that kind of spiritual definition. Let's park that for now, and let's think about glory. Now, glory is a little bit harder to define. Again, not something we use every day, but we often glorify things or people or give glory to them. So, for example, I can give glory to the honey baby chicken burger that you can go get across the road in Mad Egg. Has anyone ever had it? Anyone been to Mad Egg? If I was to get, you'll know what I'm talking about here. If I was to, to glorify the honey baby chicken burger, I would say to you, have you tasted the honey baby chicken burger? It is incredible. The brioche bun, the breaded chicken, the, the, the candied streaky bacon, the honey butter, the pickles, the lettuce, it all combines to give you, hands down, the greatest burger experience in all of Dublin. You need to go, I gotta go show you. That would be me glorifying or giving glory to a burger. So why in verse 14 are the angels here saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Why are they giving glory to God in the highest heaven? Well, on your sheet, go back a couple of verses to verse 10 and we read, but the angel said to them, that's the shepherds, do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the, town of David, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. What is the great news that, that will bring great joy to all people? What is the great news that means we can have peace on earth? Why are the angels giving glory to God in the highest heavens? Because a savior has been born. Jesus is, yeah, he's born and 30 years later, he dies on the cross. And why this is not bad news, why this is great news for all of us here on earth is that it means he can restore our relationship with God that we lost way back in Genesis. See, if you imagine this book is our sin and our, our wrongdoing, our rejection of God and God's up here, we're down here on earth. It blocks us from that relationship with God. It means we can't be at peace with him. But Jesus didn't have any sin. He, he didn't have any wrongdoings, shortcomings. He was good, perfect. He was holy. He was blameless. And he was in right relationship with God. He was at peace with him. And the amazing thing is that on the cross, Jesus is a substitute. He takes away our sin and our shame. He gives us his, his goodness, his holiness, his perfect relationship with God. And that reunites us with him. It means we can be at peace with him. That's why it's great news. And that's why these angels are singing glory to God in the highest heaven. Because now there's peace, peace on earth to those on whom his favor rests. Okay, so we've talked about peace. We've talked about glory. But it's still kind of a hard verse to remember. How are you going to remember it over the next few weeks at Christmas? Well, I'm going to show you if you all get on your feet. We're going to do a little shorthand version of this verse, just so you kind of remember and can tie it all together. So we're going to go, glory to God, glory to God. peace on earth, peace on earth. Because, of because of Jesus. Okay, it's hard to do with the mic, so I'll do it. So we're going to go again. Here we go. You can sit down, thank you. Hopefully you can remember that over Christmas. So, what are the takeaways from these couple of verses here today? Well, I'm gonna offer you three questions from verse 11. Firstly, is Jesus your savior? Do you accept that you have rejected God that your sin separates you 
from perfect and peaceful relationship with him. If you do, great. Because there's great news. Because of Jesus' death and that substitution, we can be in that peaceful relationship with him. But if you don't accept him as your savior, why not? What's, what's stopping you? Is it, do you find it hard to understand? Um, have you seen the history of all the bad things that have happened in the church, particularly in Ireland, and you just don't trust Christians? Do you read these stories and think they're just made up? What is it? Come talk to me. Come talk to a regular here at Christ City Church. Um, we can recommend lots of books. We can, we can talk to you, and we can, we can see what, what is it that's stopping you from trusting Jesus as your Savior. Secondly, is Jesus your Messiah or the Messiah? Messiah simply means the anointed one. And you can read back through the Old Testament and you can see the dozens of occasions where Jesus is referred to. He's, he's prophesied about. They, they write things about Jesus that happen all those years later. Again, we can recommend lots of books um, which, which bring you through this. And we as a church here, as Christ City Church, we believe that the Bible is one unified story which leads to Jesus. Why don't you come back in the, in the new year? Every Sunday we meet here at half four and we study lots of different passages across the Bible, but the one thing they all have in common is that they lead to Jesus. So Jesus, is he your savior? Is he the Messiah? And if he is, both those things, is he your Lord this Christmas? I wanna make it clear, we don't obey Jesus, we don't obey God, um, in order to get into his good books. Because of the cross, because of Jesus' death, we're already there. And what we do is we obey joyfully in response to that gift. Just think over Christmas in your, your, your serving of others, in how you spend your time, your money, your relationships. Is Jesus the Lord over all those things? Can you as the angels do, give glory to God in the highest heaven for all you do, all the time you spend, the money you spend, um, how you treat others in your relationships. Can you do that? Please remember this Christmas and please be challenged by the greatest gift that we've ever seen, by the, the great peacemaker, Jesus Christ. One more time before I go, we're going to go. Glory to God. Peace on earth because of Jesus. Thanks. Um, we're going to do, sorry, suddenly came on. We're doing one more song, and this song has actions. So I'll just let you sit down just so you can see them. Rebecca here is doing them, as is Audrey. Um, so the, uh, the chorus goes, I hear the angels singing. You got that? It's not too complicated. We do the chorus a few times. So, on your feet, let's sing. Thank you. 
Thank you. Just before we, uh, Jacob comes and he's just going to give us what is traditionally called a benediction, which is a blessing for us as we head into the week. Uh, let me just say thank you all for coming. I hope you've enjoyed our, your time with us. Please come back again if this is your first time. We, uh, we're just gr delighted you're here and you'd be very welcome back again. There's refreshments that we served outside. There'll be some mulled apple and some various other treats. So just do stick around, say hello, get to know us. And uh, next week we have the banquet at an hour earlier at 3.30. So come along and if you can bring a dessert and some warm clothes and things like that, come and say hello to some of our local community and we can express our love for them. So just before Jacob does a benediction, just a little round of applause for our wonderful band. And a uh, big round of applause for our kids here. You did a wonderful job. So well done. Um, also, if you are interested in learning more about the Christian faith or the meaning of Christmas, there is this book, A Very Different Christmas, What Are You Hoping For This Year by Rico Tice and Nate Morgan Locke. So do take that with you. That's free. You're welcome to take that. And then if you've never read the Gospels, we've been looking at Luke's Gospel today. Here's a free copy of John's Gospel. There's lots of them at the entrance, uh, at the exit there. So do feel free to take either of those books home if that would be of interest. So Jacob, bless us as we go. First of all, uh, we had a baby so I can talk again. Um, okay. and, and now everyone at Christ City Church, may you know God's deep love for you as you remember that he sent his son Jesus to come and rescue us. Would you remember that he offers you mercy and grace afresh every day? Would the knowledge that God calls you his child bring you peace? Praise be to God for this glorious night. Oh, well done. Thank you, Zechariah. And uh, thank you all. God bless you. Have a great week.